This is a tutorial for Syriac, a PDF viewer optimized for research papers and textbooks. Before we get to the tutorial itself, let me first show you some of Syriac's capabilities. If you read a lot of textbooks, you probably have come across some reference happy books where every other line has a reference to a previous figure or equation or theorem, which is located nowhere near the current location, and you just have to keep scrolling back and forth. Sometimes these books contain links, which make things a little bit easier. But as you can see, this book doesn't, and clicking on this reference does nothing. Siri can automatically find the target of these references even when they are not linked in the PDF file. For example, if I middle click on this reference, I jump to its location. And of course, we keep track of your viewing history, so you can easily jump back and forth between the original location and the reference material. Siri provides an even easier way to view such references. Just by right-clicking on a reference, we can open a small preview of the target location without losing any context. Of course, this too works when the document doesn't have links. Another nice thing is that if I control click on this reference, I can automatically search and download it from Google Scholar and open the downloaded file. Now here's the beautiful thing. This last Google Scholar download feature is not even a built-in feature in Siri. It is entirely implemented as an extension. Siriac has a pretty flexible extension system. For example, later in this video, we will show how it can be used to implement a screen reader. Another nice feature is a ruler which highlights the current line and makes reading dense text much easier on the eyes. Also, this feature naturally combines with the reference feature. So if I want to preview a reference in the current highlighted line, I don't have to click on it because Siri can automatically detect it. So I just press the hotkey and it opens a preview to the reference. So hopefully you are sufficiently enticed by now. Of course, we have just scratched the surface of Siri's capabilities, which will go into extensive detail for the rest of this tutorial. You can open new files by pressing O, which opens a native file explorer, or open a searchable list of previously opened files by pressing Shift O. We can also drag and drop files into Syriac. If you are using a command line, you can open a file by executing Syriac followed by the path of the file. Normally, if you open another file, it will use the previous Syriac window. If you want to open the file in a new window, you can pass the dash dash new window option. You can also open a new window from Syriac by pressing Ctrl T. Basic navigation is pretty much as you expected. You can use the arrow keys and mouse wheel to move around. You can use the space and shift the space to move half the screen up and down. Zooming is done using plus and minus keys or using the mouse wheel while holding control. You can press equals to fit the page to the screen or press F10 to fit it while ignoring white page margins. You can jump to a specific page by pressing the home key and entering the page number or using the Vimla key binding, you can type 4GG to jump to page 4. You may have noticed that there is no scroll bar by default. Personally, I find the scroll bar is a bad way to navigate PDF files, so it is disabled by default. But if you want it, you can enable it by executing toggle scroll bar command. Wait, what just happened there? Let's back up a bit. So you interact with Syriac by executing commands. For example, when you press the plus key, behind the scenes we execute the zoom in command. You can open a searchable list of all commands by pressing the colon key. For example, you can see we have a go to beginning command and on the right side you can see the key bindings that execute this command. There are two key bindings here for go to beginning. One is GG that is pressing G twice and the other is control home. Not all commands have default key bindings. For example, toggle scroll bar doesn't have one. So in order to execute it, we had to do it using the command menu here. You can search for it and execute it by pressing enter. Of course, you can add and customize the key bindings of all commands, which we will explain in the configuration section of this tutorial. You can open a searchable table of contents by pressing T. If the document doesn't have a table of contents, Siri tries to generate one. For example, this tutorial document doesn't have a table of contents, but Siri generated this for us. Of course, this is just a heuristic and doesn't work perfectly all the time. Like I said in the introduction, Siri can automatically detect reference targets, including citations, figures, tables, theorems, etc. You can go to the location of a reference by middle-clicking on it, or you can open a preview of the location by right-clicking. 
You can also middle click on, on paper names to search them in Google Scholar or other configurable search engines. Civic provides browser-like history navigation. When you jump around in a document, you can press backspace to jump to the previous location or press control right arrow to move forward in history. This history works even across files. For example, if I open a new file here and then jump to the end, I can press backspace to go back and press it again to go to the original file. And now I can use control right arrow to go forward into the second file again. All key bindings in CUA can be configured by editing the keysuser.config file. We can open this file by executing keysuser command. Also, the default key bindings are located in keys.config file, which you can open by executing keys command. Note that you are not supposed to edit this file. Rather, we can overwrite this file by editing your keysuser.config. By default, CUA uses J and K keys to move up and down. It might sound weird to you, but it is a natural key binding for Vim users, which is a popular text editor. However, Vim also uses H and L keys to move left and right, but we use them for different things in Syriac. The reason for that is moving left and right is a pretty common operation when editing text, so it makes sense to use prominent keys on the keyboard such as H and L for such common tasks. However, when viewing PDF files, you are mostly moving vertically, and horizontal movement is pretty rare. So we use HNL for other more common commands. Anyway, let's say you are a Vim fundamentalist and you find the idea of using HNL for anything except left and right extremely offensive. No worries, here is how you can configure it. First, we find the commands that we want to remap, in this case move left and move right, and copy them to keysuser.config and change the binding to HNL. If I go back to CUAC, I can use HNL to move horizontally. Note that I didn't have to restart Syriac because we live reload the changes whenever you change the config files. By the way, if for whatever reason executing keys user doesn't open your user config file, you can always manually create it here. Let's do another key binding to showcase some of the more advanced features. When reading two column documents, when you are at the bottom of the first column, you usually want to jump to the top right of the document to read the second column. Let's create a key binding that makes this task easier. We have a go to top of page command which navigates to the top of the current page and a go to right command which moves to the right side of the page. We want to execute both of these commands when a key binding is pressed. We can do this by separating these commands using a semicolon like this. Now for the key bind, normally you would use something easy to type, but just to showcase the syntax, I'm going to use a very convoluted key binding, which means first press G and then control T and then control shift right arrow. For more documentation on how to use this key binding, see the top of keys.config file. Many aspects of Siri can be customized in preference files. Like the keys configuration, there are two files for preferences. The default prefs.config file, which you can open by pressing prefs command that is not meant to be edited, and prefsuser.config file, which can be opened by executing prefsuser, and it is where you customize your preferences. The prefs.config file contains a brief documentation on what each of these options do. For a more thorough documentation, you can go to the documentation website here, which is linked in the description. Here we show how to configure the color scheme of Syriac. We have a dark mode which basically inverts the lightness values, and additionally we have a custom color mode, which allows you to specify exactly which colors you want to use for background and text colors. You can enable this mode by executing toggle custom color command. We can edit the colors used by this command by adding this to our prefsuser.config file. These are RGB values between 0 and 1, so 111 means white. Let's make the background a little more red. Similarly, we can change the text color. Now suppose you want this color scheme to be the default and you don't want to have to execute toggle custom color every time you open a new Syriac window. You can configure Syriac to automatically execute toggle custom color every time it is opened by setting startup commands like this. Now, when Syriac starts, it will execute toggle custom color. If you wanted to execute multiple commands, we could separate them by a semicolon. For example, let's say I also want scroll bar to be enabled. I can configure it like so.
You can mark locations and return to them later. If you are familiar with Vim marks, these are pretty much the same thing. And if you are not familiar, here is how they work. You press M to mark a location. Now you can see in the status bar, it says set mark is waiting for symbol. Some of the Siri commands require a symbol to be executed. A symbol is just a lowercase or uppercase alphabet letter. For example, if I press B now, the current location will be marked with symbol B. Now I can navigate all I want and anytime I want to return to the marked location, I just press tick B. Note that tick looks similar but is different from the single code and is uh, usually located in the top left side of the keyboard. Marks are persistent, meaning they are saved when you close Syriac. Also, lowercase letter marks are local to the current file, so I can have another mark named B in another file and it will not clash with this one. Uppercase marks, however, are global. For example, I have created a mark named capital T in the tutorial PDF file. So whatever document I have open, I can always press T capital T to jump to the Syriac tutorial. This can be very helpful with some reference documents. You can search by pressing slash or control F. After entering the query, you can press N to go to the next match and shift N to go to the previous match. By the way, did you notice how quick the search was? Here I will search for all instances of letter A in a 700 plus page document. 3, 2, 1, BOOM! We have found all 70,000 plus matches in less than a frame. Now by default your search will not be this fast, but there is a super fast search option in press file which if enabled indexes the documents and significantly speeds up the search times at the cost of slightly increased memory usage. Note that when you open a document, there is an indexing message in the status bar for a few seconds, which means the document is being indexed. We do this indexing even if super fast search is off because we need it for smart jumps. But when this option is on, we index the entire document text instead of just the references and later use it to speed up search. Also note that the entire indexing only took a few seconds for this 700 page document. Okay, back to searching. We can specify page range to search using the following syntax. This will look for, for the query only in pages 10 to 20. In the marks section, I said that marks can be lowercase or uppercase letters, but there's the special slash mark that automatically marks the last location you search from. So if I perform a search here, I can navigate as I please and return to the search location by pressing tick slash. There's also a regex search command, which works when you have super fast search enabled because it uses its index. This command allows you to use regular expression to search a document. For example, if I want to find all the digits in this document, I can search for this. Note that this search was also almost instantaneous. You can create a bookmark in the current location by pressing B and entering a text for the bookmark. You can search among the bookmarks of the current document by pressing GB or search the bookmarks of all documents by pressing G capital B. Note that Siri has a no modifying PDF files policy, so unlike most other PDF readers, these bookmarks are not embedded in the PDF document, but are kept in Siri's database. If you want to embed them in the file, for example to view in another PDF viewer or share with a colleague, you can create a new PDF document with embedded annotations using embed annotations command. Also, there is an extension that embeds the annotations in the current document, which we'll discuss in the extensions section of this tutorial. You can highlight the text by selecting it and then pressing H followed by a symbol. Like the mark command, highlight also expects the symbol, which will be the type of the highlight. Different types of highlight are colored differently. For example, if I press A now, we create a highlight of type A. If you don't care about different highlight types, there is also a add highlight with the current type command, which uses a default type to highlight the selected text, so you don't have to press a symbol every time. You can see the current highlight type in CX status bar. For example, the current highlight type is A. You can change it by executing set select highlight type command. Like bookmarks, highlights are searchable. You can search the highlights of the current document by pressing GH and search the highlights of all documents by pressing G capital H. Using smart jumps, you can get an overview of a reference by right-clicking on the reference. But what if the document doesn't have a concrete reference? 
For example, here this part mentions assumptions in page 529, but doesn't directly provide the reference. The solution is to manually create a portal from the current location to the assumptions location, which signifies that the current location is referencing that location. We can start creating a portal by pressing P, which sets the current position as the source of the portal. And you can see in the status bar that we are linking this location. And we can navigate to the destination of the portal and press P again, which sets the destination of the portal. We can open a helper window, which displays the target of the closest portal by pressing F12. This is especially useful for users with multiple monitors, where this window can be placed in a separate monitor. As we scroll through the document, the helper window updates to show the portal with the closest source location. We can adjust the destination by dragging or using mouse wheel. We can also use control mouse wheel to adjust the zoom. If you don't have a separate monitor, we can use the overview to portal command to open a small preview to the closest portal. Note that the destination of a portal doesn't necessarily have to be in the same document. For example, here I have created a portal from a set of exercises to the corresponding location in the solution manual. I can quickly check my solutions by opening the portal window. As I scroll in the portal window, the destination of the portal is updated, so it naturally keeps up with the current problem being worked on. Another example of portals is this extension, which extracts the highlights of the current document into a new document and creates a portal from the highlight to their corresponding location in the original document. So I can just jump to the original location by pressing tab. Right clicking on a line will create a highlight under that line. We can move this using arrow keys or J and K to highlight the current line being read, which makes reading a lot easier on the eyes. There is a visual scroll mode, which enables mouse wheel movement of this line. You can enable this mode by executing toggle visual scroll command or by pressing F7. This feature also combines naturally with the smart jump feature. So now instead of clicking on a reference, we can just use the current highlighted line to automatically detect the target we are referencing. For example, if I want to view an overview to figure 11.2 while this line is highlighted, I can press L which opens an overview by executing overview to definition command. There is also a go to definition command which jumps to this location and a portal to definition, which creates a portal from the lines position to the reference material. There is also a special mark named tick which marks the last location of this ruler. So if I'm reading a document and I scroll away to read something else, maybe to check out the definition, I can always return to the last location of this mark by pressing tick tick, which brings me back and exactly highlights the line I was on. CUEX live reloads the document if they are changed, which is quite useful when editing LaTeX files. Moreover, CUEX supports SyncTech, which allows you to jump between the corresponding locations in PDF and LaTeX files. Of course, you need to configure CUEX and your text editor to recognize each other. There are instructions for VS Code and VimTech in the documentation. Once configured, you can enable SyncTech mode by executing toggle SyncTech command or pressing F4. Now, Right clicking on a PDF document jumps to the lo corresponding location in the tech file. Similarly, we can do a forward jump from the LaTeX file, which highlights the corresponding location in the PDF file. CUEX stores all your data in two database files local.db and shared.db. The local.db file stores system specific information, for example, the location of a file on your hard disk. Shared.db stores all other information, including highlights, bookmarks, etc. And as the name suggests, it can be shared across machines. So if you copy your shared.db file to another computer, all your data will be available there. Better yet, you can specify the path of this file using shared database path config option. For example, if you set it to a synchronized folder, for example a Dropbox folder, your data will automatically be synchronized across your machines. You can control CUEX entirely using keyboard. This includes things such as text selection tool, which you can perform using keyboard select, which will show a label next to every word in the page. Now enter the labels corresponding to begin and end of desired selection separated by space to perform the selection. There are equivalent commands to do a smart jump or open an overview using keyboard tool. 
Serial commands can be executed externally using execute command option in the terminal. For example, running this on a command line runs a zoom in command on the current running Serial program. Also, you can provide data for the command using execute command data option. For example, You can also use Serial to run command line programs. For example, suppose we want to add the functionality to read the current line to Serial. There is an ESP command line program that does that. This is a test. We could create a Serial command that reads the text of the current line by adding this to prefsuser.config. New command is used to define new commands. Underscore eSpeak is the name of the command that we are creating. Note that the name of custom commands must start with an underscore so as not to be confused with a future built-in Serial command. This part is the shell command that we execute whenever underscore eSpeak is executed and this part is a built-in Serial variable that expands to the text of the current highlighted line. There are many other variables that indicate the path of the current file page number, path of Serial and its database files, etc. You can view the documentation here for a complete list of built-in variables. Now in Serial, if you highlight a line and execute the underscore ESP command, we get this. A odd character with a flowing white beard looking suspiciously like someone in figure 11.2 appears. We can bind it to a keybind in our keysuser.config file like this. Of course, this is not very useful because we have to manually keep highlighting the line and pressing the buttons. I've created a more fleshed out TTS extension here with uh, some improvements. For example, instead of performing text to speech line by line, it uses the entire page text, which makes the speech flow better. And also it automatically highlights the current line being read with no need for user input. In order to use it, first I fire up the TTS server by executing TTS start server and then running TTS read, which starts reading from the current highlighted line and keeps An moving the highlight as it reads. white beard looking suspiciously like someone in figure 11 point appears in Washington Square Park in New York City, a favorite hangout of chess players. He sets up a folding wooden table and sits down at it. We can stop reading by running TTS stop. The code for this extension is in the scripts folder in Serix source code. Unfortunately, it has several large and hard to install dependencies, so it is not exactly production ready and is pretty difficult to set up. But it showcases what is possible using Serix extensions. There is a Python package named Serix which makes writing extensions using Python easier and faster because it uses a better communication method with the running Serix process. Also, it includes a few built-in Serial extensions, like the highlight extract or paper download ones we showed earlier. To install it, just run pip install Serial. We can use it like this. This module comes with a few built-in extensions. For example, to install the paper download extension, we add this to our prefsuser.config. We can bind it to control click by adding this to our prefsuser.config. For more documentation on how Serial extensions work and how to create them, see this page. Here is a quick tour of built-in extensions. As we have seen, paper download can download papers. It also has an option to copy the bib tech of the paper into clipboard. Civic doesn't have dual panel feature, but using dual panelify, we can create a dual panel version of the current document. Embed annotations embed the Civic annotations into the current PDF file so they are viewable in other software. Import annotations is the inverse of embed annotations. It imports the embedded PDF annotations so they are searchable in Civic. We have seen the extract highlight which creates a new document with the highlights of the current document. Translate can show translated text in the status bar. First, select a rectangle using select rect command and then execute remove annotations to remove intersecting annotations. 
Add text allows you to add text annotations by first selecting a target rectangle and then entering text. 